Hi, I'm Nelly, and I'm here in Svalbard with BBC Earth. We are currently here in Lungevien, which is the world's northernmost town. And it is on Svalbard, which is situated halfway between mainland Norway and the North Pole. So every day in Lungevien, you could think like, oh, this is just a normal town and then you go for a jog and then you reach the limits of the city and there's a huge sign saying like extreme polar bear danger behind this sign. It's like, it, you kind of forget how special it is, but then there are reminders everywhere. Since we're here on Svalbard where there are polar bears, we have to bring a polar bear guard. Ta-da! Polar bear guard. And what is your uh, chore? It's to see polar bears and keep you safe. So keep them at a distance away from the group. And how do you do that? We normally use the flare gun or common sense. Try to spot them far further away and try to, to keep our distance. And if they approach, 99% of the cases, flare guns are the best ways to deal with the polar bears approaching a group. We can hold off the polar bears because we have quite many flares. And then we can have a helicopter up here if they, within 40 minutes, one hour, and they can chase the bear away. And that's a much more desirable outcome than actually shooting a polar bear. That's why the population is doing so, so good up here. So if you're out and about and do spot a polar bear, the most important thing is to stay calm and try to gather your group and walk slowly away. And the absolute worst thing you can do is to kind of scatter around. You may think that, oh, but maybe it won't eat me then. But that just makes a polar bear attack way more likely. And if you start running away, you can also kind of wake up its hunting instincts. So it will start chasing you. And that is quite scary because they are surprisingly fast, although they don't run far. So in the Arctic, even though the calendar says summer, it's not necessarily that warm. It's usually around 6 degrees and if you're really lucky, it can pass 10 degrees, but that is on very special occasions. So usually what you wear is one layer of wool against your skin and then another layer of wool over your wool. <laughs> and then if you're really cold, another layer of wool. But then, outermost layer is important. It should be windproof and waterproof. Or else, if it starts raining a little bit, you'll just get wet and cold. Or if it starts blowing a little bit, you'll just be super cold, like to the bone. But with wool and a nice little everything proof layer, you'll be nice and toasty. Since we're sitting still while we're filming, I have to dance a bit. A little bit to keep warm <laughs> so I don't freeze to the permafrost. Ah! <laughs> because of the permafrost, you can't really build anything on the ground here. So, what you'll see is that all the houses are on stilts. Langerbien is home to three kindergartens and the world's northernmost school. If you want to go grocery shopping, you're going to have to pass our terrifying stuffed polar bear with the Norwegian flag. Oh! Langerbien is home to a lot of sleigh dogs. And you see these all around to keep them nice and toasty while you're shopping or out with friends. Although they actually don't need it. Usually sled dogs just uh, let themselves be buried in the snow and they're warm there. These are the kind of trash cans you'll find here in Longyearbyen because anything more fragile would just make it so that the polar bear could come in, knock it over and eat our trash. And that attracts more polar bears. So this is what you get up here. This is a kick sledge. And as you can see, it's in the completely wrong season. But in winter, it's really nice because these guys are made out of iron and will slide easily on the ice. And then you just kick towards the ice and you slide all the way to where you want to go. Longyearbyen used to be a coal mining town and you can still see remnants of that period today scattered around the terrain. 
and my grandpa used to be a coal miner in this very town. Coal mining attracted a lot of people, so my grandma was actually up here being a nanny for a rich family, and that is how my grandpa and my grandma met. And then decades later, I go here to study, and I see the very mines that my grandpa used to work in, and it's just uh, gone full circle. Another fun fact about Svalbard is that you're not allowed to have cats here. Cats kill a lot of birds and they're not a species that should be here. But there is one cat in Barnsburg registered as a fox. <laughs> and another thing that's different up here is that in the summer we have the midnight sun, which means it's light 24 hours a day. The sun never sets. And in winter, we have the polar night, which means that the sun never rises. It's dark 24 hours a day. So yesterday, when we were on our way back on the boat, because we had been to Kapvik, uh, we passed a glacier. And then I saw one of the a little, like a little iceberg with sort of like a yellowish color that was behaving strangely. And then I realized it's not, an, it's not a lump of ice. It's the head of a polar bear swimming past our boat. It's incredible. It's uh, the closest I've ever been and I've never seen one swimming before. I've only See, seen them on just... land. And it was just an insane moment. Like, I think it couldn't have been more than like 50 meters away from our boat. And I was, I was a little bit terrified, but mostly I was just in awe of its, like, about how big it is, how majestic it is. And um, it's, 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 it's a once in a lifetime experience. So I, I don't even know what to say about it. It is quite a sight to be seen. Ever wonder what it's like to live in the world's northernmost city? Well, it's kind of weird and kind of wonderful. 